there for Dustin. We'll zoom in a little bit, see exactly that Argena does look like has a supreme verdict on the stack, I believe. We'll see. And there's also an Umzama Shite and a sort of fire and ice in play. A couple of lands here. So we'll see exactly what's going on here as Spencer is up a game. Yeah, this is... Uh, we kind of expected Jun to actually defeat Esper Deathblade, so I'm surprised he's down a game. Although Spencer's got some really powerful equipments in play, and Dustin can't see what does... Yeah, it looks like he's got some more mana there, and he does have the Punishing Fire combo going. Uh, one smart person on Twitter does say that it is much harder playing in a shirt with sleeves, which... It's, yeah. That's, that is true. It's exhausting. That is true. It's a lot more exhausting. And do want to give some credit here to Lloyd Kurth as well. I'll tell you what. Forcing that Lotus Petals... I mean, that play may, may actually won in the game. I'm not even kidding. It looks, yeah. it looks crazy. No, it, it, it definitely did because yeah. of the Scalding Tar. Yeah, that play may have just won in the game. Brilliant. Yeah. Play of the night. Wow. So let's see here. Dustin facing it off against two really impressive pieces of equipment. Fortunately, Spencer does not have anything to equip to it. It looks like he has two creatures in his hand. Again, he's facing down the Punishing Fire combo, though. So very difficult to equip creatures, especially if they're two power or two toughness or less. Let's see what Spencer can do here. He's sitting at a relatively healthy 10. And Dustin at 15. Here's a Stoneforge Mystic. All he needs to do is get one creature on Short of Fire Knights, but I don't know if he's ever going to be able to do it. <laughs> That's the tough part. This Punishing Fire is always just going to be running rampant. So, might be, might be headed to a third game here in a moment. There's a batter skull. Yeah, this is exactly the type of situation we thought Dustin could uh, exploit. And uh, Spencer is going to get a batter skull. Um, let's see what Dustin decides to do. If Dustin, yeah, if, if, uh, if Spencer doesn't try to equip here, Dustin's really doesn't have to cast Punishing Fire just yet. I think he will, though, because he doesn't want the Batter Skull to move away. But because he has Lightning Bolt in his hand, too, and an active Death Rite, with Spencer being at 10, he's pretty close to dead. Mm -hmm. But it uh, looks like he's just going to deal with that uh, Stoneforge Mystic and then probably drain uh, at the end of the turn. But nope. Looks like he's just going to untap. Doesn't get to draw a card here. That is a Wooded Foothills. And she's going to pass the turn back. No rush here. No rush. I'm content with just grinding you out. Caracas. There's a Snapcast Rage. Here's a Batter Skull. It's pretty nice. Four toughness and all, but... Yeah, unfortunately, Dustin does have the Punishing Fire, along with a Blighting Bolt. So that can deal with the... But I think he, yeah, I don't think he wants to do it. He doesn't have to do anything yet. He can wait for Spencer to try to equip. Mm -hmm. But then again, he exposed himself a little bit to, to counterspell or, yep. or some sort of permission if Spencer has any in his deck. I think what Mr. Spencer is looking for is a true name nemesis. I think yes. that's the card he would like to draw. <laughs> yeah, true name would be a sick top. Would that, would that be good? Would that be good? <laughs> do you like that? Yeah. Going to return Punishing Fire here. We have seen this before. This is actually what makes things a little bit difficult here for the Esper Deathblade deck is all their creatures outside True Neosis can be fired down by Punishing Fire plus Grove of the Burn Wolves. Heck, even the Planeswalkers can, like Jace. Jace is actually pretty poor against Punishing Fire plus Grove of the Burn Willows. So it's about True Nemesis in this matchup. I'm hoping you can get it to live. And if you can get some equipment on it, you're likely good to go. Yeah, that's probably how game one went. I'd imagine it was just, hey, here's a equipment on a True Name. Everyone's favorite. So Spencer's currently at six, so let's see here. Can he finish him off this turn? Death Rite drops him down to four. We have a Lightning Bolt that brings him down to one. You activate Grow the Burn Willows, bring him up to two. You get back your Punishing Fire, and then you kill him. So yes, I believe Dustin might have enough to just kill Spencer this turn. And Dustin is just thinking about what he wants to do here. I think he does have the win available right now. If the life title's correct, I believe he has it. Yeah, he's just got to find it, that's all. And Bloodstained Mire for the turn. And, yeah, especially given the fact that he didn't actually just try to kill the, the token last turn, I think he's actually going to just, yeah, he does have it. So he's going to gain a life, and then he's going to get back to Punishing Fire. 
Spencer's going up to seven, and Death Threat Shaman activation plus Lightning Bolt plus Crunch for Fire is exactly seven. Boom, Lightning Bolt. Boom, Punishing Fire. Boom, Boom. Death Threat Shaman. That's it. Boom, All headshot. Right. Dustin Childs is going to win game number two here over Spencer Argentina, and that means we are going to head to a third and final game here between Esper Deathblade and Punishing Jun, which means I suppose we can take a look at the sideboards, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. uh, we will look at Spencer's here. And on his sideboard, there are a whole bunch of ones and twos, a cage, a needle, a sword of fire and ice, two meddling mages, two rest in peace, a disenchant, a fluster storm, an additional force of will, path to exile, two copies of zealous persecution, a supreme verdict, and a thought seize. We saw a verdict if you cast that game, so it looks like that's in the deck. What else do you like here, though? Uh, a lot of ones and twos, man. I mean, obviously, rest in peace is huge. Um, I kind of like meddling mage, too. I would bring in old Chris Pakula. Uh, I think BB, who was it talking about it, Brad? Brad was talking about how Meddling Mage, he just kept bringing in card more and more. Um, just naming Abrupt Decay, yeah, maybe, he said, maybe he said Punishing he loved Fire. It. It's like whatever, it's just a guy. Yeah. Just name Punishing Fire. I mean, sometimes you can randomly just hose your opponent. Um, obviously, Sword of Fire Dice, Meddling Mage, rest in peace. Um, let's see there. Beyond that, though, uh, I, I, I like the Supreme Verdict and I guess the Thought Seize, maybe? Um, but beyond that, not much else. But again, he's got, you know, Rest in Peace, obviously, That's very great. good at, at stopping the Punishing Fire combo. Turns off Tarmogarth, turns off Deathrite Shaman. Mm -hmm. um, turns off your Deathrite Shaman as well. Um, but uh, no, I believe he's playing the, yeah, he's not playing the Deathrite version. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it looks like a, a pretty solid cyber strategy. Uh, on the Punishing side, he's got, um, he's got two Ancient Grudge, which is obviously great, considering all the equipment that uh, Spencer has. Um, he's got, let's see what else he has, a Golgari Charm, that's a way to actually deal with Rest in Peace. Um, two copies of Engineered Plague, probably not good enough. Um, let's see there, Umazawa Jete, I kind of like that card. I like the Maelstrom Pulse as another way to deal with equipment. And I actually like the Phyrexian Revoker too, because it can randomly, you know, you can name Stoneforge Mystic. Um, it can randomly just name cards that uh, are a little problematic. It's another creature, not ideal. But uh, if you feel like you need another way to kind of stop equipment, it's a, it's a reasonable card to bring in. But definitely the Ancient Grudges, definitely the Maelstrom Pulse, and I, I like the Jete as well, too. And Golgari Charm is another thing I think I would like to bring in, just because, True one, name. it can <laughs> stop, uh, it kill True Name, yeah. and then it could also protect you from Supreme Verdict. It can deal with Rest in Peace, so it does a, a, a lot of heavy lifting in this matchup. You just see a few players there behind Dustin kind of walking away. The reason for that is because there are some players Dueling some modern. Oh, yes. Some modern battles over there in the background. Our modern IQ had eight rounds today. So, players 250 are actually, players. Yeah, they're not Very messing around. Very popular event. Yeah, they are finishing up that tournament as well. So, that was a big hit. We're glad we were able to bring modern over to you guys moving forward here on the Open Series. A lot of players came out for the first one. Expect to see it happen in Kansas City next weekend, too. Yeah, it's going to be uh, exciting to see how that one grows. People really love modern. But obviously, there's a Grand Prix next weekend. So testing for that, a priority for a lot of players as yeah, well. Absolutely. Well, game three looks like it's going to be underway here. Both players finish shuffling, and we are going to watch hopefully a fun one here. The winner of this match, again, going to play against Lloyd Kurth, who did make the top eight of our standard open, looking to bring a trophy home with his Shardless Bug deck, a deck that actually we saw win in Portland a couple of weeks ago in the hands of James Wynn playing Shardless Bug. So maybe that deck's back. Maybe it's back. Yeah. And uh, I know Jerry T would be happy if it was back. <laughs> Absolutely. So Spencer, it looks like he's going to mulligan to six. And I believe Dustin is comfortable with his seven cards. Spencer just replacing a sleeve here. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Legacy. Legacy Modern. People always talk about which format's better. I love both formats. And, uh, you know, I'm excited that uh, I believe Star City is actually running a Legacy Grand Prix later in the year as well, right? At Grand Prix, yeah, New Jersey? Grand Prix, New Jersey. Oof. You're going to be there? You don't go to any events. Oh, You're going to be there? I'm going to be there. All yeah. right. It's in my hometown. All right. Them. You never go to anything anymore. You're so old. I am pretty bad. I'm actually genuinely upset that you're not going to Worcester next weekend. I get to play one tournament. I am very, I'm a very busy man, and I have very important things that I have to do yeah, okay. that weekend. Okay, brunch boy. <laughs> brunch and some bad chick flick. I know. I know. Yeah, you got to do what the boss says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the boss says, you do. What's the best recent chick flick you've seen? Uh, the best recent chick? Uh, I <laughs> prefer not to say because it's fairly embarrassing. No, do you, you can't do that. Pro
probably an, a, a movie called uh, Enough Said. It stars Julia Louis-Dreyfus Dreyfus and Tom, J- James Gandolfini, and it's like about two middle-aged people. I don't even want to talk about it. It's too embarrassing. <laughs> Let me just, let's just go back to the match. So uh, Spencer leaves at the planes after a mulligan to six, and he passes. Dustin Shields has a bloodstained mire, and he's going to crack it. Uh, Dustin, Spencer's got a pretty good uh, hand here off of a mulligan. Um, but uh, let's see what Dustin does here. If this is a death right shaman, um, it's a pretty good start because I don't think... Oh, no, Spencer does have a plowshare, so... Okay. Yeah, so it's not that big of a deal. I mean, death right's still a good start regardless, but there's a buy in. Dustin's cycling through his deck. It looks like... Oh, yeah, it looks like he brought in a power blast, too, uh, as possibly as a way to stop Jace the Mind Sculptor. Also, counter tree nemesis before it hits play. That's true, yep. Well, That's right. obviously. Can't get off a table of power blast, but you can stop it. Got some versatility there. Now here is death right. I think we're gonna see a source of real quick here. Yeah, get that thing out of here. Death right is too good to let stick around. Yeah, I gotta say, the, the cool thing about Jund is it, it allows you to play blood rage, blood rage elf in Legacy. There's just something so cool about that. <laughs> Jund is. I actually just genuinely like Jund because it's like a fair deck, but it's like a good fair deck. Yeah, that's it's, actually why I like it. Dark and uh, you get to play Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant, Death Rush Shaman, this card, th- this deck was too good in Modern. They had to ban it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, Dustin has a Wasteland, unfortunately. Spencer really doesn't have any targets just yet. And there's another Death Rush. Wow, so great draw there for, for Dustin. Well, there's an answer in the Council of Judgment. That can get that off the table, but do you want to keep having this battle is the question. Yeah, especially if you have a Vendillion click. Mm-hmm. The only click I don't expect to stay, stay around very long in this matchup, however. A lot of removal there over for Dustin. Rep the K, Punishing Fire, yeah. Lightning Bolts. The only good thing for Spencer, though, is it, it looks like it might be able to take a uh, Blood Braid Elf away from Dustin's hand. So, um, Even though, yeah, it's a, a one toughness creature is usually not going to live very long against Jund, um, being able to steal either a Punishing Fire or a Blood Braid Elf can be pretty good. But Dustin's hand's just stacked. Dustin's got a Blood Braid Elf, a two Dark Confidants, and a Liliana the Veil as well. Wow. So, very, very good hand for Dustin. Just going to pass the turn back here after playing the Underground Sea. Draw a card, Will Dustin. As you said, his hand is relatively stacked at this point. So, we'll Looks see. like he does have that Engineer Plague, too, that we brought up in the cyber day. Um, didn't expect them to bring it in, but again, that is a, oh, I'm sorry, that is a way to kill True Name Nemesis, yeah, of course. So yeah, so you expect to see that, too. Just name Merfolk. Those things are gone. So actually, his deck's pretty good against True Name Nemesis. It's going to sacrifice one of Foothills. We also saw Dustin Wood earlier against Goblins with Engineered Plague, and, you know, I don't really want to talk about it, Yeah, it wasn't close at any point. And Spencer has an interesting decision here. Um, he might want to respond in response to the sack land to Vendillion Click, mm-hmm. because you got to think, if he's sacking right here, is it potentially he might have a uh, Blood Braid Elf. Yeah, because right, if he's going to sack, he's probably going to use a Death Ray Shaman too, right? Yeah. To add some mana. No guarantee of that. I mean, Death Ray Shaman could attack. Oh, yeah, right? so you can respond to the activation of Death Ray Shaman then. That's true. That's true. Uh, but then again, if, if Blood Braid comes into play, you could always hit like an Abrupt Decay or something. There's a good chance he could just hit something that, that won't matter. So um, maybe you just don't care about Blood Braid. Blood Braid and Empty Board isn't nearly as devastating because obviously there are cards that can get blanked. Gonna remove a wooded foothills, generate four mana, and Spencer's saying in response to the death right shaman he might have an effect. Yeah, he's gonna respond. Yeah, yep, I he's like gonna it. make that play. I like it. And he's not gonna be happy with that hand though, because if he takes the blood rate off, he's basically just gonna let <laughs> Dustin play a um, Liliana. Yeah, because here's, here's the thing. He actually. The way he tapped his mana, actually, he responded to the death right activation, so you can just say name a get a black. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. You know, what mana? Was oh wait, exploded? you know what? No, that's not true. Yeah, he hasn't. He hasn't announced the mana that he has I, floating. I, I don't think he. I don't. I don't know if he announced the mana he had floating. Yeah. He kind of tapped everything all at once. So, a um, little poor sequencing there from Dustin. Um, he might not be able to play Liliana depending on what he has floating here, because he need. You, you know, obviously he was gonna cast Bloodbraid out, so you'd imagine he's probably tapping for red and green. Right? Yeah, and that's exactly, I think that's the question right now. Okay, what mana are you using? Yeah, now, yeah, this is this is a tough uh, tough turn for Dustin. A little poor sequencing might lead him to not be able to cast that Liliana. So let's see. I, I think uh, they're both trying to figure out what's going on here. Obviously, if, uh, if there is a black in his pool, it's going to make his decision a lot harder. <laughs> 
you don't want to let Liliana resolve, and then he's just going to down tick it, and you're going to lose your click yeah, anyway. So. Not really going to get much work done. And you can see Spencer, he's got a real decision to make. Again, Liliana over there, you see the engineered plague. There's two copies of Dark Confident on the Bloodbraid Elf, which is what Dustin wanted to cast. It's a lot of stuff for Spencer to overcome because his hand's not very good, but those are all like card advantage machines, each one of them. Yeah, and, it, and if you don't take the Bloodbraid Elf, now Abrupt Decay, if it gets hit, that's live now too. So um, he's going to take the Bloodbraid Elf, and now if, if Dustin didn't have a Black Floating in before the Deathrite activation, then I don't think he can cast the Liliana this turn. He might just have to settle for a Dark Confidant. Or Dar Dark Confidant Sylvan Library. <laughs> I've seen worse turns. That's for sure. So, not sure what color mana he has floating. I think that's the question still. Well, we're going we're gonna to find out pretty quick based yeah. on what he casts. Don't forget Death by Shaman can add any color, too. So, yeah, a so library. again, if he likely just had a red green floating now he's gonna he can get a black mm -hmm. off the death right so dark confidence is gonna come into play so still a pretty good turn um despite the fact that he can't get liliana he can always try to go for liliana next turn spencer gonna unsap he draws a copy of academy runes you can see his hand right now is not very good again he's got three lands academy runes crocus and i believe a swamp and then a council's judgment that's it no stone forge no equipment nothing sweet to do no tree nemesis even though that can be handled by engineered plague so he is in a world of trouble look how far behind he is opponent has sylvan library to help with the draw has dark confidence by card advantage death by shaman with the color fixing everything else that card does there's a wasteland to go after lands he's got great cards in his hand it's going to take a real nice string of draws here for Spencer, I think, to be able to get back in this. Yeah, this is like an ugly. Dustin's draw this game was just fantastic. Now, don't get me wrong. Caracas is actually pretty good in this situation because it can mess with Vendillion Click. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, not uh, great. He actually, has, he actually has to use Caracas for the second white to be able to cast Council's Judgment. Uh, but do you want to cast Council's Judgment? Well, here's the thing. I, I think this is, you know, maybe Spencer's thinking is, you know, my Vendillion Click's going to be pretty poor anyway because of Engineered Plague, so what's the point of doing this Caracas stuff? I suppose he could just bounce it back with Caracas and take E Plague. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's like, you, you basically, if you don't tap your Caracas, like, getting rid of Sylvan Library when your opponent also has a Dark Confident play is not the biggest thing in the world, you know? Um, but Dustin could make a mistake and just play Liliana, think he's going to be able to down take it, not realizing the Caracas interaction. Then you can kill Liliana that way yep. and deal with Engineered Plague. So yep. um, I, I don't think you get that much value out of uh, count, casting Council's Judgment, and you could potentially just force Dustin to make a mistake. Yeah. And given given the hand, and given what he's working with, I think in this situation he has to hope he makes a mistake. Yeah, you gotta you gotta take your chances, and I think it's a calculated risk. You're not, and, you, and all you're doing is, and you're still gonna have a Council's Judgment in your hand. You're basically giving him one turn to activate Sylvan Library. So Dustin now got revealed the Tarmogoyf with that Dark Confidant, and I believe he drew an Ancient Grudge. So um, he does have protection against artifacts. So uh, that's huge, because obviously True Name Nemesis equipment is one of the main ways Spencer has to defeat Dustin. Are we going to see a Liliana? Yes, we are. So Liliana is going to start putting a lot of pressure on Spencer's resources. Dustin is going to be generating a lot of card advantage off that Dark Confidant. And uh, he also has a wasteland in play too. Let's not forget. I don't know how he can come. I don't know how he can come underneath this avalanche card advantage. Every single card that's out there for Dustin is providing just an advantage that's cascading right now. Dark Confident again providing more cards each turn. Liliana. All right, I'm gonna take care of Dilling Click, and now I'm gonna start going after your hand. Yeah, and I, I mean, you kind of said this before the match. You kind of, you know, this we kind of thought Punishing Jun was gonna defeat Esther Stoneblade. It just seems really tough for Esper Stoneblade. And there's not even a Punishing Fire involved in this game yet. No, just a lot of powerful black cards. So Spencer draws an Inquisition of Kozilek. It's going to see all the nightmare cards out there. <laughs> Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, Ancient Grudge, Engineered yeah. Plague. Just pick, a lot of problematic pick cards. Pick a card. <laughs> yeah, you can't I, have all four. You can, you can have two of them. I'm probably going <laughs> to yeah. win with what's on the board anyway. Yeah. It's actually what I was thinking. You can pick two of them. Not take Grudge because it has flashback, but you can have two of the other three. I guess. I guess you take the. Uh, I guess you take the E Plague here. Maybe I don't know. I think you. T I think you take E Plague because. Well, I was gonna say I think you take E Plague because Train Nemesis says you're out here, the but because yeah. Liliana's gonna go up. Yeah. It's not even that great of an out now. Man, Spencer is in a horrible spot. Yep, he's gonna take Tarmogoyf.
This is going to reveal a burning catacombs with dark confidant and draw for the turn. Looks like it's another burning catacombs. And uh, I kind of like getting another dark confidant out there. Although Spencer does have double white, so a top deck supreme verdict would be pretty bad. He's going to attack for two. Just uptake Liliana, get rid of the last card in Spencer's hand, leave him with just four mana. Yeah, I think last turn he needed to wasteland a uh, Caracas to yeah. keep him off a of double white. Liana takes up, takes your academy runs. Don't play another Dark Confident. And his life total's high enough that that's not even really risky. Spencer's going to draw a card. This is this is how Jun wants to play literally every game. Just grind you into the ground. And then you can't you can't come back. Because their incremental advantages are too much to overcome. You know, they're not going to do anything really busted. This here's a path to exile. But they're just going to grind you down with Dark Confident advantage, Liana advantage, Punishing Fire advantage. Eventually... What you draw just doesn't matter. What Spencer's... If Spencer could Demonic Tutor right now, what would be his best draw? That turn, Supreme Verdict. It's, but he's not even, like, out of the woods. It's just... It's fine. It's just... Yeah, you still have to come down with a, a Planeswalker. Yeah. But, uh, it, you know... That's kind of... Yeah, th th this is the deck. You know, it's very grindy. Uh, Liliana Vale is... It's... J uh, and, and I feel like... In Legacy, it's on the same power level as Jace almost. I mean, it, only only because it's faster to get out there. You know, it it I've seen Liliana the Veil just take control of so many games in Legacy. It's unbelievable. And you know, just costing three instead of four, and it goes perfectly in Deathrite Shaman decks. It's like <laughs> it's just such a problematic card for so many decks, especially the fair decks, and even the combo decks. Got... I think the combo decks is a little scary because they can play it on turn two because yeah. Deathrite Shaman. This is kind of, you know, this is the reason Bug Delver decks and, and, and Jun decks are successful because the Death Rite Shaman and, and Liana Vale are, are two of the big reasons. Yeah. Bob, Verdant, Wasteland. Oh, why not? <laughs> Lucky out of uh, Supreme Verdict now. Yeah. There's a Grove, too, in case Punishing Fire shows up to the party. You can keep going to work. It's an attack for four. Our Jenna's going to go down to ten. Yeah, let's see here. Wasteland takes out the Caracas. You uptick Liliana. Uh, things are looking pretty good for Dustin. <laughs> You're putting it pretty mildly. It's, things are looking great. Even if, even like, even like a uh, Lingering Souls wouldn't do anything. No. Dustin has an engineer play, and yeah. he doesn't even have Lingering Souls in his deck. Up to three. Discard a land. Hold on to a grudge. Pass the turn back. Draw a card. That's a, that, that's a land. Go ahead. Dark Confidant. It's actually the way for. Dustin win the, excuse me, the way for Spencer win this game is Dark Confidant actually killing Dustin, I think. Yeah. And that's just not going to happen. Abrupt Decay and Tiger are the cards revealed. Here comes a card drawn. It's another copy of Liliana. That's a pretty good one to discard to Liliana, of course. Somebody put an Emrakul on top of Dustin's deck. That's Spencer's <laughs> only chance. In for four we go. Spencer's going to go down to six. Dustin, again, can move that Liliana elevator up. That's what he's going to do. Be able to make Dustin, excuse me, make Spencer sacrifice creatures if necessary. There goes the Taiga. Just going to pass the turn back. Doesn't have reason to do anything. Spencer. Going to play a Flooded Strand. Pass. You know, it's, you know, even, you know, I was thinking, what if he draws Batter Skull? Well, he has an Ancient Grudge. Also, he has a Liliana in play. Dustin going to take one. Go down to nine. Third card coming for the turn. I don't think he drew for the yeah, turn. Yeah, he does need to draw for the turn. He did forget to do that. So we will make sure that happens here in just a moment. Let's see here. I guess he's thinking I don't really need any more cards to win. Yeah. So uh, let's try to keep this fair. Yeah, I'm doing you a favor. And uh yeah, I mean you don't really need to cast a death right, Shaman. You don't wanna you gotta play around uh Supreme Verdict a little bit, but again, it doesn't really matter. So they will get this resolved here in just a moment. Put a pause on this relatively close game. This is pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> this is my. This this part is horrible for coverage. All right, we need to figure this out, Jose. Yeah. This is. Uh, Draw the card, reveal the cards, kill you. This That's, is really close. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really 
interested in finding out how this game is going to play out because I feel like, oh, and he drew a Golgari charm as, as uh, oh, the, the last the card he didn't draw, the card he drew for the turn is Golgari charm to protect himself against Supreme Verdict. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> live in the dream. Yeah, there's... now I'll play Death Wish. Yeah. yeah, sure. No it's problem. safe now. It is definitely safe. There is a grove. This is a taking up. This card, Ancient Grudge, for max value. Oh, all right. Oh, just a land. Don't need that land. All right, so we'll pass here. Spencer draws for the turn. I hope it is a Supreme Verdict. <laughs> yeah, it's going to stick. What it is, an extension of the hand. Dustin Charles is going to win this match. His friends behind him are absolutely thrilled because he is moving on to the finals to play against Lloyd Kurth, Punishing Jund versus Shardless Bug.